John Barnett here, and I get notes from all of you that are finishing up your small group studies through Revelation. So many of you took the challenge and you've found a small group that I encourage you so many times to do, and you've gone through all 20 weeks lessons. And I'm, I'm just so thankful. In fact, specifically, I heard this week from two of you that live in Southern Alabama, Brandon and Chris, and you said, that you wanted me to send a note to your group, okay? Now, I don't usually do this, but as you can see, I'm in the middle of uh, teaching uh, our year-long journey through the Holy Land, the virtual study tour of the land of the book. And so I said, honey, do you have a minute? We're gonna tack on to the end of this lesson uh, a little note, and this is for your group. You've just finished going through the 20 lessons on Revelation. Now, what I'm going to do is share with you what I just finished today working on. And it, I was invited to come to one of the premier Bible conferences in the country this summer, next month. And they said, would you summarize what you teach in all of your Bible Institute classes about Revelation into a series for lay people, just normal men and women that aren't in Bible school. They just want to understand the Bible. And I said, okay. And so I entitled it, What's Next? And I'm going through and summarizing Revelation in three lessons. Now, I, I want to just show those to you right now. Look down at the slides. Uh, I'm titling the series, What's Next? And it's a summary of Revelation in three parts. Satan's defeat, Earth's repair, and the launch of heaven. Now, Brandon and Chris in Alabama, God bless your small group. Those seven families who met and studied and encouraged one another as we live in a darkening world to wait for Christ each day. Now, the end of the world trends are that there will be greater, greater visibility, frequency, intensity, and impact of these events. And this is what I'm going to teach this week. Look at this. This is a headline from July 14th. I mean, what is that? That's uh, four days ago. This is the headline. Everything, everywhere. And if you read it, look that, type that into Google, Everything Everywhere news article, The Big Problem with Microplastics. Look up. Do you know what it says? It says we're breathing plastic in. It's going in through our lungs. It's so tiny, those nanoparticles are getting into our bloodstream. And recently, within the last two months, a doctor was able to in a blood sample, a blood draw, actually find plastic floating in people's blood. You say, hmm, what does that have to do with Revelation? Look back at the slide. There is going to be people knowing more and more intensely the fact that we're on a dying planet. Look at this next slide. Right after that article, the right kind of filter can keep microplastics out of your drinking water. Uh, slow sand and membranes can knock out nearly all the tiny pollutants. That was July 19th. Or, or no, that's June 19th, so it's almost a month ago. Now, now look up, what does that mean? Well, the Bible says the time is coming where the Earth's waters are going to be so poisoned that people can't even drink them. Have you thought about that? Have you thought about the process, the journey that we're on right now? Look at the slide. More and more people are becoming aware. Our water is getting to be undrinkable. It, more, we're hearing about it more and more. In fact, the intensity, the, the amount of Earth's uh, water that is not any more usable is, is increasing, and it's causing great danger to our planet. These are end-of-the-world trends. Now, look, this is from Brussels, Belgium. PFOS and PFOAs are found in soil samples, but not in water or vegetables. This is supposed to be encouraging. Uh, that one is July 14th. That's four days ago. They were trying to encourage the people of Belgium, saying that they are finding these forever chemicals that you've heard about. They're in all of these new modern uh, um, devices that plastics and fabrics and foam and everything else. And they say, these are not in our water or our vegetables. <laughs> oh, good. But they're in the soil. And why did they show us that the chickens are scratching and eating the soil? Maybe they're going to show up in the eggs. All these are, are more of the birth pains. 
Here's another one. Should we be worried about the PFOAs in our drinking water? Here's what we know. And what they said is, and here's the conclusion, cancer-causing herbicides are found in 80% of U.S. urine samples. That's July 12th. Glyphosate, a cancer-causing herbicide, is found in 80% of all urine samples from kids and adults in the U.S. Whoa. Here's why. These are people spraying weed killers to grow more crops. It's a pesticide ingredient that's linked to all kinds of bad health. We are watching, that's July 13th, we're watching the world die around us. Uh, this, this is just three days ago. A hypothetical weather forecast for 2050 is coming true next week. And this talks about how Europe's having the highest ever recorded temperatures, India, uh, the Gulf region, people can't even make it. And this is on the 15th. The first red extreme heat warning was issued. Look at this. For the first time, temperatures of 40 degrees centigrade have been forecast in the UK. It's a red warning. What they're saying is, and well, here, look up, I'll read to you. Uh, that was three days ago. Do you know what happened today? The Royal Air Force of the United Kingdom cannot take their planes off because the runways are too soft for fighter jets to, to go fast enough or for the big transport planes to go down because they sink into the blacktop. Wow. Why am I saying all this? Look back at the slides. Because the end of the world trends are going to be like birth pains. They start small and, and kind of easily ignored and then they intensify so more and more people see them, they come closer and closer together, they get stronger and they impact more and more people. This, July 15th, a heat wave and fires are scorching Europe, Africa, and Asia. Did you know that kind of happens every year? But it's happening bigger, stronger, and more visibly. What are the end of the world trends that, that I'm gonna summarize in three lessons at the Bible conference this summer that I wanted to share with you first because you want me to greet your group? You're gonna see global diseases getting more lethal. We're gonna see global warming getting hotter and hotter. That's exactly what God said is gonna happen. The water shortages are gonna get worse and worse. Not just not enough water, but the water we have is gonna have all that plastic and herbicides in it. Food scarcity is gonna come. Aren't we seeing that with the Ukrainian conflict? Speaking of Ukraine, global conflicts are gonna get bigger and deadlier. How many times have we heard about atomic bombs threatening Western Europe, the UK, and the US? Global hatred for Christ is gonna get more personal. We are gonna become less and less uh, accepted in the world if we follow Christ. And of course, we know that the computers and surveillance are making us more completely tracked. Well, healthy believers, what are you supposed to do? Let me read to you from Hebrews chapter 10. Here, look up, grab your Bible, and uh, for all of you study groups, even if you're not in Southern Alabama, even if you're some of the ones in the United Kingdom, in Singapore, in New Zealand, and Australia that I'm hearing, hearing from, that have taken the challenge and started the small group, this is what we're all supposed to be doing. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24. Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Here's what we're supposed to do. Exhort one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Look here. We're here today. We're awaiting the rapture, the tribulation, all those events are coming. In the tribulation, Satan will be defeated. At the end of the tribulation, God's going to repair the earth, fix the water, fix the air, fix the earth. Heaven's going to be launched. But what are we supposed to do today? What's the purpose of prophecy? As you notice more visible, frequent, intense, and impactful birth pains, Hebrews 10, 24, and 25 says, stir up people around you. Look at the slides. Let me show you how to stir you stir up love and good works in others by speaking faith-stirring, hope-building words that feed their soul. 
Say, where are you in your scripture reading? Are you listening to God every day by feeding on his word? That's the first thing we're supposed to ask each other every day. Are you spending time applying God's word to your life? Are you memorizing, chewing on, and digesting the word of God? Is that flowing into prayer? Lord, change me. Lord, use me as a as your instrument. Lord, change my life. Lord, work in those I love. Help me to be a witness. And then are you actually taking time every day to try and share the gospel? Are you witnessing for Christ? I, I long every day to speak a word and lead people to Christ. Are you eating, chewing, breathing, and going? Well, that's my challenge. And uh, thank you for letting me know that you finished the, the uh, study. And before I go, I'll just say this. If you're looking for something else to do, Bonnie and I have spent a whole year of our life packaging Christ's last words. This is a 36-lesson study through the three chapters of Revelation 1, 2, and 3. Uh, I wrote a book that has study guide questions for small group. It's kind of like not talking about prophecy. It's talking about how to live today. Not, not about the tribulation, the second coming. It's about what does Jesus expect from me at school, at work, and in my neighborhood, and in my marriage, and in my family, and in my private life that only God sees. And what we've done is we package the whole course on one flash drive. See it right there? All 36 lessons where I teach, plus this book, plus all of the, the, the graphics and, and everything else is all on this flash drive. And if you want to keep going, uh, you can personally read Living Hope. And, and that's a one year long devotional, but if you want to have a small group experience, it's take a year going through Christ's last words for his church. You don't even need the internet. You can just plug in the flash drive and watch the videos. Or the audios are there. You can listen to them, you know, download them to your device and listen to them in the car. And then gather once a week and do a small group study of Christ's last words to his church and learn these things. Let me just read to you real quickly the 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 lessons. Unwrapping Jesus Christ, seeing his eyes of fire, seeing the real Jesus, what happens when Jesus finds sin, seven lessons from Revelation 1, the secrets of a powerful church, how to rekindle your first love, learning that life is camping and heaven is home, and that's only the first nine weeks. And it goes all the way through, and God will bless and transform your life. Thanks again for letting us know you finished. God bless you as you continue to eat and chew and breathe and go and stir one another up. And I can't wait till we all get together around the marriage supper of the Lamb and worship the one who bought us with his own blood. God bless you.